Hello there, my name is Ismos and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial and uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to make this futuristic shield uh, in Blender 2.8. You can see I will have this dome here and maybe it's set up by the alien uh, to protect it from uh, any human projectiles and uh, when the projectiles hit the dome you get uh, this reaction. Yeah, so let's see how to set that up. Uh, so this is mostly going to be a shaders uh, tutorial uh, looking at the shader setup. Uh, because everything else is a bit simple. We are, we are using a uh, dynamic painting to capture those impact points. Uh, so let's, let me show you how to set that up and then I can show you how to set up the material. So let's delete this cube and add a few sphere, scale it up. Uh, so the quality of these gradients you see here, these impact points, is going to depend on the uh, subdivisions of your mesh. So to make, to have better subdivisions you can just add a high resolution uh, uh, UV sphere, or I'll see how it how it works with a UV with a subdivision modifier uh, because I didn't use it before, but uh, I think that can also improve the quality. So, uh, yes, yeah, let's set up the impact point. So, select the UV sphere, go to the rigid body system, and add dynamic painting. I make sure the type is canvas and uh, add it as a canvas. And then the surface side should be our waves and uh, I think that's all I would have to set up. Then we just need to work on the projectile. So just add a cube or whatever projectile you want to use. Give it an, a simple animation just going through uh, the, the UV sphere. Uh, let me end my timeline to 100 frames. Then if we play back Nothing is happening. Uh, so what we do need to set up here is uh, make sure you have the select the projector selected, uh, then give it a dynamic painting property, and uh, change the type to brush, add a brush, and uh, that should let's see how this is impacting uh, the this. So let's see if I add subdivisions. If that actually it improves uh, the quality of. Uh, the the waves so let's shade smooth this and uh, basically uh, this is what you want to set up you, you can play with the uh, dynamic the wave settings here uh, like uh, speed let's say if I put it to 0.5 see that makes uh, the wave a little bit slower and I can also give it some dampening so that it doesn't go too fast. If you want it to go faster, I just remove or reduce the, the, the damping. So you can play with those settings and see what results you like better. But uh, basically what we want is uh, that impact point. And uh, the reason we're using the wave uh, the wave surface instead of any other type here uh, is because uh, the wave kind of displaces this, this geometry and uh, we're going to be using the gradient texture to kind of shade uh, different pixels, uh, different vertices. The, the vertices that are pushed out of the geometry or pushed in are going to be shared a different uh, shade than uh, uh, the rest of the polygons, uh, which will give us a mask of uh, this wave spreading around. And uh, again, we could have used uh, the displacement uh, surface type, but that just displaces uh, the surface uh, without creating that wave pattern uh, that we want to use. Basically, that's it. And uh, if you want this to bounce off, bounce off uh, the, the, the shield, uh, you would have to give it a rigid body system. So rigid body. But uh, you can see if you do that, it, it will just fall down. So to make it respect uh, the, uh, the animation you added in, you just have to turn on animated and uh, make sure you animate it and uh, the next at around here, switch the animated off uh, so that the rigid body system can take over and yeah, kind of do that. Uh, but uh, also this should be a rigid body with a passive type so that it, this can bounce off or collide with that. It will still create the impact but then bounce off. I also don't like how this the height is a bit too, too high so you can go to the rigid body system, to the dynamic painting system and I reduce, what would it be? I think scale influence. Actually, 
actually, I don't think it's the scale. It would be. It would be radius. Let's see the brush. Webs. Yeah, you can play with the settings and see the right settings you want to use for the webs. But uh, let's go into the materials uh, before this becomes too long. Uh, so for the texturing, uh, you can see what it did here. Again, you can see uh, the waves are being created by the impacts. And uh, to kind of capture that detail, uh, what I did is add a texture gradient, a gradient texture, sorry. Now, if I preview this, you can see by default, it's just a simple black and white gradient from left to right, uh, depending on the rotation of your object. Uh, but uh, if I add texture coordinate mapping and change the texture coordinate output here at object, and then this to spherical, you can see I start capturing uh, the details or any extrusions uh, from uh, the surface geometry. So if I add a convert color ramp, I can create a more contrast a high contrast wave like that and I can see if I play back and see that's what you get. Basically that's what I did and then I used that and see the mask I created here is uh, this and use that as a mix node for this texture here and and uh, what did I mix it with yeah basically I mixed I overlaid this here on top of this kind of have that like that uh, you can see the entire setup of the material in the time lapse. It's very easy to set up. As long as if you have the mask, everything else is very easy. You just have to mix different nodes together. I don't want to have this story going forever. So uh, if you want how to watch how I set up that material, the material is very easy to set up. You can just go watch uh, the time lapse here. You, you will also see how I added in the house and everything else. But uh, uh, yeah, the concept is just, the hard part is just to get uh, this mask here. And uh, let me maybe just show you how you can mix two texture, two materials. So if I had a color mix RGB here, give this a uh, blue, color one being blue and another one being red. If I add this as a factor, can see what we are getting. Uh, the impact points or the waves are becoming red and uh, if I want to make them a bit brighter I can just increase the contrast there and you can see that's what we're getting. Then you just switch out the, these colors are uh, with textures so if I get animate texture if you can find one I just get anything random here mix that in and see what we are getting. So basically that's what I did. I switched out uh, one of the, t the colors. Actually, this is not what I did. But it's the best, it's, it's the same, it's the same setup. So instead of using the mix node, I fed this directly into the emission uh, by colorizing uh, this, gra this grid here. see I colorized actually every time I open up a project I worked on I'm always forgetting what I did and uh, do things differently uh, but uh, if you want to see how I set up this here uh, you can just go watch the time lapse the time lapse because if I try setting it up again I'll do it completely different uh, from how I did it before so as you can see, this time I was using a mix node instead of what I used here, which was uh, colorizing the color ramp and uh, using the mix node. Yeah. 
happens a lot, but uh, you would achieve the same results. So because there are different ways to achieve the same results, uh, so every time I try it, doing, doing it uh, again, I'm always doing it differently. Uh, so yeah, thank you.